What's up, collectors? Welcome back to Films by Color. Today, I'm going to be unboxing my package that just arrived from the March Criterion Flash Sale. Let's see what I got. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into this sale haul. I actually got a pretty hefty haul this time. I limited myself to only five releases, but it actually turns out to be 11 films because one of them is a collection of five films and one of them is a collection of three films so a lot of films to talk about today i do one of these sale haul videos every time criterion does a sale so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss one of these videos and make sure in the comments below you let me know what you picked up in this sale because i'm always looking for new and interesting things to add to my collection but on with the haul the first thing i picked up is robert bresson's ahasar baltazar which is a film that came up in the comments section recently in our Oscar video that we did. We were talking about how many donkey movies came out this year. And uh, a lot of the comments were saying how this is the best donkey movie ever made. So those comments piqued my interest and I wanted to go ahead and check it out for myself. The profound masterpiece from one of the most revered filmmakers in the history of cinema, Robert Bresson's Asar Baltazar follows the donkey Baltazar as he is passed from owner to owner, some kind and some cruel, but all with motivations beyond his understanding. So it actually sounds kind of similar to EO from last year, which is also about a donkey who is passed from owner to owner. I really enjoyed EO and this sounds interesting as well. This is a film from 1966 and it is only 95 minutes. Through Brenson's unconventional approach to composition, sound, and narrative, this simple story becomes a moving parable about purity and transcendence. So very similar to EO. I, I didn't realize how similar that sounds. Uh, maybe the movie itself will be very different, but just in premise, uh, a parable about a donkey being passed from owner to owner sounds very similar. So I think I'm really gonna like this and I'm excited to check it out. There are quite a few bonus features on there as well. Next up, we've got, ah, okay, so I recently started dipping my toe into the filmography of John Ford. Grace and I have been watching a couple of his films recently on St. Patrick's Day. We watched The Quiet Man because we were in the mood for an Irish film. And then right after that, I think the very next day, it was the same weekend, we watched The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance with Jimmy Stewart and John Wayne. Great, great movie. Really enjoying John Ford stuff, so I thought we would take it one step further, and we, I got Stagecoach in this sale, which is a film that I've never seen, but it's directed by John Ford. I think it's his most famous film. It's, it's a big one for him. And uh, I wanted to check out a classic Western from him because we really, really enjoyed The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, but that's kind of, I don't want to say an anti-Western, but it's, it's basically uh, showing how more rough and realistic and just the harsher negative sides of, of that time period. And I wanted to watch a Western that was more depicting the heyday of the Western, kind of just a fun, well, I don't know if this is fun. I actually don't know much about this movie. Tell me about it in the comments, but uh, just more of a classic style Western. And uh, this, uh, by all accounts, seems to be that. This is uh, where it all started. John Ford's smash hit and enduring masterpiece, Stagecoach, revolutionized the Western, elevating it from B-movie to A-list and establishing the genre as we know it today. So yeah, just a real classic Western because I have not seen very many Westerns at all. It's, it's a real blind spot for me. So I feel like I needed, I owed it to myself to check out this one, the original. And it is also a 1939 film, which I have a little running collection of. I've talked about it before on this channel, but that is the golden year. And I like to collect as many films from 1939 as I can. So this was a kind of a double whammy. Uh, we're, we're in the mood for John Ford films and it's also in 1939. Beautiful artwork on this, almost charcoal looking artwork underneath. And then the big bold stagecoach right there at the top. Love the blue and orange. I think it looks really good. And that aesthetics carried through on the inside as well. You've got the same blue sky artwork on the booklet. The man himself, John Wayne, in a nice duo tone of red and black on the back behind the disc. And the disc art is very nice as well. I really like the disc art on that one. So a lovely looking release, and I hope I enjoy the movie as well. Let me know in the comments if you've seen that one and what I should expect from that. I hope I didn't make a mistake by buying the Blu-ray because I could see them releasing a 4K of that one. That might be one that gets a 4K down the line. Never know which ones are gonna get it. It's always tough. All right, my next one here is a 4K. This just came out at the beginning of this year. I had to pick this one up. I haven't seen this film yet, but I am a big fan of another adaptation of this source material. This is Terry Gilliam's version of The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. I, of course, have talked 
about Carl Zeman a bunch on this channel. If you still haven't seen The Fabulous Baron Munchausen by Carol Zeman, absolutely check it out because it is delightful. And I'm really hoping I enjoy this one too. This is Terry Gilliam's version. Very cool artwork on that one. And it definitely carries over to the inside too. We've got two really crazy looking discs. So you've got the black disc, which is the 4K, the blue disc, which is the Blu-ray feature, and then you've got the red disc, which is the Blu-ray special feature. So three discs in this one, very nice. And then we've got the lovely fold-out with the essay. And of course, you have to have them riding on the cannonball. That's the most famous imagery from the Munchausen stories. Terry Gilliam has been hit or miss with me. I think I've seen three of his films now, maybe four, and uh, I, haven't, I haven't loved all of them, but I'm hoping that this being a fantasy thing will be more in my wheelhouse. And I'm interested to see how closely this resembles the Carol Zeman version, because I know Carol Zeman was an inspiration for Terry Gilliam, but I know they do have a uh, very different style. So I don't know how similar these will be. From everything I've heard, this is apparently a very visually stunning movie. So I'm hoping for that. And I'm um, hoping I really enjoy this one. I think it's gonna be right up my alley. So I'm very excited to check that one out. Next thing I got is an Eclipse series. Uh, I've thought about trying to maybe get one of these each sale uh, and I never see them in stores at my Barnes and Nobles when they have the Barnes and Noble sales so I usually have to get these offline this is the Eclipse series George Bernard Shaw on film very nice bright vibrant yellow color the hugely influential Nobel Prize winning critic and playwright George Bernard Shaw was notoriously reluctant to allow his writing to be adapted for the cinema yet thanks to the persistence of Hungarian producer Gabriel Pascal Shaw finally agreed to collaborate on a series of screen versions of his witty socially minded plays starting with the Oscar winning Pygmalion so that was the first film that he actually allowed Hollywood to make based on one of his plays. And then the next three that followed were these three films in this list. That first film is already in the collection proper, and these three are only in the Eclipse series. But uh, this does include all three of those. The first one here is Major Barbara from 1941. Secondly, we have Caesar and Cleopatra from 1945. And the third film, and the main reason I picked up this set is... Androcles and the Lion, which sounds the most interesting to me. It says it's about a Christian slave who pulls a thorn from a lion's paw and is spared from death in the Colosseum as a result of his kind act. So it seems very much like a Hans Christian Andersen-esque fable, and that really appeals to me. I popped it on on the Criterion channel for a little bit and watched maybe the first 15 minutes, and it seems like it's a comedy. It seems very much like a stage play, and uh, it seemed like I would enjoy it. So I went ahead and bit the bullet and just bought the whole set. I may have to reach out to Criterion and see if they can send me another one of these, because this one actually arrived pretty damaged. The corner is smashed, and the slipcover is ripped right there, and the actual corner of the case, the plastic case, came kind of shattered and is, like, broken right there at the top. So hopefully customer service at Criterion can help me out with that. It looks like this next one is a little smashed up too, which is a bummer because this is the thing I'm probably most excited to check out. This is a box set. This is a five film set from a French director called Pierre Atax, who I was not familiar with until very recently. I've been watching through the complete Jacques Tati box set put out by Criterion. The last couple weeks I've been watching a lot of Jacques Tati films. And one of my letterbox followers, Robinson, left a comment on my Mon Oncle review suggesting this filmmaker to me. He said, maybe you'll enjoy Yo-Yo by Pierre Atax. Similar Tati style. He worked with him as well. And there's a circus, which I know is up your alley. So Robinson knows me well. I'm a big fan of circuses whenever they pop up in cinema. And one of the films in this, the one he recommended, is called Yo-Yo. Right there, it's the second film. A French comedy master whose films unseen for decades as a result of legal tangles, director-actor Pierre Atax is a treasure. His work can be placed on the spectrum of classic physical comedy with that of Jacques Tati and Jerry Lewis. These films, influenced by Atax's experience as a circus acrobat and clown and by the silent film comedies he adored, are elegantly deadpan, but as an on-screen presence, Atax radiates warmth. So this set includes The Suitor, Yo-Yo, As Long As You've Got Your Health, La Grande Amour, and Land of Milk and Honey, and it also includes three shorts, Rupture, the Oscar-winning Happy Anniversary, and Feeling Good. So you've got a lot of bang for your buck in this one. It includes five films and three short films, and it comes in this lovely digipack. Thank you so much for making me aware of this, Robinson. It sounds like it's gonna be right up my alley, and I am looking forward to checking it out. Here you go, you've got this 
slide out right here. There, I'm assuming is a portrait of the director. You've got illustrations on the back. It's got a nice, thick book. So yeah, that is definitely the most intriguing pickup from this sale haul for me personally. And I wouldn't have even known about it if it wasn't for that lovely comment. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate all of your comments down below. You guys are always telling me about cool things that I should check out. It's really helpful for me and I think it'll be helpful for anyone else who is reading the comments. So make sure you let me know in the comments down below what you picked up in this latest Criterion Flash sale. I'll be back very soon with more videos about Criterion and other things that I'm adding to my collection. And I'll see you then.